Welcome to the Shalom Learning Center 10 Minutes Lectorium. And we're focusing our attention on the history of Judaism and Jewish people, which is essential for understanding of the New Testament and beyond. Um, so far, we have spent quite a number of lectures uh, discussing uh, the exile and immediate post-exilic development. Uh, and now we are in the uh, Hellenistic period or uh, the Second Temple period, uh, so-called intertestamental period, if we are talking the language of a Christian seminary. During this time, we have a Greco-Persian wars uh, which end up with the uh, victory of uh, Alexander the Great and uh, creation of the uh, huge empire that uh, doesn't last very long uh, because uh, Alexander the Great dies childless uh, and uh, so the empire is broken into four uh, kingdoms uh, and what happened uh, Judea ended up squeezed between the two large kingdoms, the kingdom uh, ruled by Seleucids, uh, which is uh, centered in uh, uh, modern-day Syria, uh, with the capital of Antioch, uh, and the kingdom of Ptolemies, uh, which is uh, uh, around the modern-day Egypt, uh, and these two kingdoms, uh, they uh, fight uh, between each other uh, for the influence and territory. And it happens that Judea uh, is uh, squeezed between these two warring kingdoms. Uh, Ptolemies um, are very tolerant to Jews. Many Jews uh, have lived in Egypt uh, since the time of the destruction of the uh, first temple. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, Jews are important part of uh, Hellenistic, Ptolemaic, uh, Egyptian society. As uh, was mentioned in the previous lectures, uh, Ptolemies, uh, uh, they... Uh, invest into translation of the Torah into Greek. Uh, thus, uh, the scripture of the Jews becomes popular and accessible not only to Greek-speaking Jews, but to anyone uh, who wishes uh, to read it in Greek language. Uh, though uh, translation has some uh, interesting issues, uh, but it's still uh, a good uh, step toward uh, popularization of the knowledge about God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, so, on the other hand, uh, Jews in diaspora, while they remain faithful to God and they worship God, and they attend synagogues, they're living in the so-called secondary smoke environment. What do I mean? If Jews live in Alexandria, which is a very Hellenistic city, Alexandria is full of all kinds of pagan places of worship that are not only pagan, uh, but they're also uh, very uh, promiscuous. Uh, think about the Greek sculptures that emphasize human body. Uh, you go to any kind of uh, a museum, Paris, Louvre, and, or uh, British Museum, or, or all kinds of other museums, you see old Greek statues, uh, they uh, glorify nudity. For the Torah, for Jewish culture, uh, which is centered around the commandments, uh, that's just horrible. Well, but what can you do if you live uh, among this uh, culture? You just uh, 
try to go around your business, uh, not pay attention to this, focusing on God. And this is how many Jews of the diaspora uh, lived, and they were used to this so-called, quote-unquote, secondary smoke. Not the Jews of Judea. During Ptolemies, uh, they basically lived Jews of Judea to their own autonomy. Um, of course, uh, Judea was not very well developed. And so um, they didn't have many technologies and niceties of the large Hellenistic cities. Um, but they were okay with that. Uh, everything changed uh, when Antiochus III uh, took over large territories and became really great. Uh, he was succeeded by Antiochus IV, who was uh, known as Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, was very, very uh, fanatical Hellenist. Um, it's important for us to understand uh, what Hellenism is all about. It wasn't only about the Greek culture. Alexander the Great had a famous teacher, Aristotle. Aristotle was the disciple of Plato. So Hellenism, first and foremost, centers around philosophy. And what Aristotle did, he encouraged his pupil, student, Alexander of Philippi, to go and conquer the world in order to spread the teaching which Greek philosophers formed and developed. Uh, Greek philosophy did not form by itself. The uh, originators of Greek philosophy, uh, Pythagoras, uh, Thales, and other uh, famous uh, philosophers, uh, who were also known as, uh, like Pythagoras, known for his theorem, and also for the invention of the music scale as we know it today. Thales was also a mathematician who uh, contributed to the development uh, of uh, geometry. Uh, Euclidius was... Uh, uh, what uh, was basically a father of modern uh, uh, school geometry, which we know today the two parallels don't uh, intercept with each other and uh, so forth. Uh, all the, this Greek uh, philosophy basically uh, was in the foundation of the science. And uh, it came from Egypt, because Thales and Pythagoras and Euclides at some point and others, uh, they all uh, learned from uh, Egyptian priests. And uh, we know somewhat about the development of Egyptian astronomy and medicine, uh, and we do know that it was all in the hands of the Egyptian priesthood. That same priesthood that helped Pharaoh to make some miracles until they had to acknowledge the finger of God during this standoff uh, at the time of Exodus. So Hellenism has a long history. And with Alexander the Great, under the encouragement of uh, uh, Aristotle, it really uh, was spread around the world, and uh, it was in conflict with the foundation of Jewish religion. 
with the foundation of the Torah. And uh, why was this in conflict? We will talk about in the next lecture.